All right, music fans, uh, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for real people just like you and just like me. And while Nicki Minaj and her supporters are questioning the official narrative and protesting down at the CDC in Atlanta, Garth Brooks has taken a slightly different approach. Country music oligarch Garth Brooks, ladies and gentlemen, says that he won't be playing stadiums. They're just, you know, you can't ensure safety at the stadiums, even though the NFL supposedly is doing it. Nope, he is worried about safety protocols, so he's scaling back his shows. No longer will he be going to stadiums. Now he's going to be going to, wait for it, dive bars. Garth Brooks at the dive bar. And, you know, what is a dive bar as far as revenue for a guy like Garth Brooks? Not a whole lot, unless you're like charging $1,000 a pop. And by the way, you're going to have to cram a lot of people into a dive bar in order to make any money. And how far apart do these people have to be in the dive bar? I mean, you know, what's interesting is that some of these so-called protocols, they tell you to do it but then they don't do it. And then they get mad because, you know, you don't do the one that they feel like if you don't want to wear a medical device on your face, they get furious. Like, how come you're not doing that? Well, you're a foot away from me right now. <laughs> so how is this a thing? But that's not a thing. You know, it gets really confusing and you have to write all this stuff down. But what's weird is Brooks, right, is saying that I can control the people at the dive bar, but I can't control the people at the stadium. It's always about control. So he goes on to talk about this. And some of the stuff he says is, is very interesting. He says, everybody at the dive bar has done the thing. Uh, have Garth, have you been to a dive bar lately? Not like a posh, you know, roadhouse bar in Texas, or I'm not to say that they're posh roadhouse bars, but you know, not the ones where you get all the sort of, um, I don't know, machines and uh, mechanical bowls and things, just not a, not kind of like a cushy dive bar, which by the way, that wouldn't be described as a dive bar anyway. I'm talking about a real authentic dive bar where people get tossed out, you know, like physically thrown out of the bar and where the people are a little, you know, rougher and tougher. And uh, they're probably not listening to Garth Brooks anymore. At one point, maybe back in the 90s, before Garth got super commercial and uh, was more interested in hanging out with Billy Joel than uh, being on the country music charts. I mean, if you take the 90s, I'm always thinking George Strait, Alan Jackson, Joe Diffie. Travis Tritt. That's what I'm thinking of, right? But, you know, I, Garth Brooks is on that list, but he's down at number 72. I just doesn't really matter to me. Um, I enjoyed that decade, but I was Garthed out. I had too much Garth and I didn't like the proportion of Garth I was getting compared to some of the other great artists that were putting out amazing material. So anyway, just wanted to kind of flash back to the 90s for a moment. But we're here in the year 2021, and the only way you can control people is downsize the venue. Um, he talks about the NFL. Yes, they've managed to do this in stadiums. He says, great for them, but I just can't imagine how you pull all that together. Uh, Brooks added that he plans to learn from the NFL, schools, and other organizations to improve his safety measures in the future schools, you know, like, again, mandating medical devices. Um, by the way, schools have not mandated that you do the thing, at least not yet, uh, but they're trying like heck. Um, I've been hearing all kinds of crazy stories, like kids are, are getting the thing without their parents' consent. Just mind-boggling stuff. I mean, I don't know what I would do in that situation. There would be a uh, white hot rage that would be first. And then, you know, again, I don't own a firearm and I don't plan on getting one, but uh, 
there are days where I think to myself, please don't do this. Please don't make people more angry than we already are. Um, this is the paragraph, though, that blew my mind. He says, I've done the thing 100%. Everybody on the freaking tour, that's his words, not mine, have done the thing. I cannot make you get the thing until it becomes a law. He goes, until it becomes a law, it is a choice. So the law shuts down the choice. That sentence is probably one of the worst things I've read this year. Until it becomes a law, it is a choice. So you had freedom until we took your freedom away. Until the government decides to take your freedom away, then you still have a choice. And he goes on. And people, when things are a choice, you have to understand and respect that we're all going to make our own choices. So he's really, this is just, how dumb can you be? So when things are a choice, you have to understand and respect people that we're all going to make our own choices, but we need to make it a law so it's no longer a choice until it becomes a law. I, I, I don't have any words for this. This is just, so he basically says, come on, government, hurry up so I can play stadiums again. That's what that is. That's if people would just all bundle, if they would all do the thing the world would be the best place ever, and this would all go away. Well, look at countries that had a really high level of thingdom, okay? I'm just making up words now, and see where they are, see how many cases they have, see what else is going on there, and see countries that have kind of gone off the grid and found their own way to deal with this, and Sweden is one of them. Uh, India did something where they changed things up a bit and things got much better. Um, none of this, folks, the United States is the worst at this because we've prolonged this forever. We've prolonged it. You know, God gave us certain things, <laughs> not those things, but our own built-in stuff, right? And we're no longer, we're no longer encouraging people to do that. We are making it sound like if they don't do the thing, they're not going to live. And they're going to, if they get too close to somebody, that's the end of it. The amount of fear that will be sustained for years to come is a scary thing to even think about. But articles like this, and this guy, like I said, he's a country music oligarch. He sits way atop everybody else financially even though he's definitely not the best country artist there's ever been. No way. Again, he's down at number 72 for me. I mean, he's better than what? Hank Williams? Really? He's, he's better than Merle Haggard? I mean, pff, give me a break. I mean, <laughs> Waylon Jennings? I mean, any of the outlaw country guys, thousand percent. Garth Brooks is like a soy boy compared to those guys. You know, he looked good in a cowboy hat back in 1991. Played the part well. Okay. Had one or two really good albums. That's kind of it. Done. Two and done. Whatever. And he's, you know, telling everybody that uh, he knows best for them. And until they make a law, which I think he's hoping for, then people will still make choices. Damn it. Those pesky choices. Why do they have to keep doing that? Anyway, I don't think I'm going to be going to the dive bar to see Garth Brooks. But I am more than happy to go to a dive bar where they don't require the thing and where I can see some really good, cool live music. And that's probably what I'm going to do. Anyway, that's my video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, folks. Hit the bell for notifications. And yes, you can join me on Patreon. Got many patrons uh, talking these days, can barely keep up with it. But for a dollar a month, you can be part of the conversation. Or if you just want to support the channel, I really appreciate that. Until next time, I'll see you soon.